Okay guys, this is part three of the Spring Chinook Seminar by Josh Hughes at Three Rivers Marine in Woodenville, Washington. That herring is ready to go back into the brine, ready to get hooked up. So again, set one of those in there. I'll go through and do a chartreuse one in real speed. See how, see how color those are already getting? They'll get darker and darker the longer they sit in there. They'll look like antifreeze pretty soon. That's what I like, okay? When this is trolled around for 15 or 20 minutes, it'll dull up a little bit, um, but that's okay. I like that bright flash and I like, you know, there's 100 boats down there doing it. I want to do something a little bit different, okay? They've seen a million herring go past them that day. How can I set myself apart? And that is maybe a different color, maybe a different scent. So cut my herring. Clean the cavity carefully. Little incision in the outtake. I think it's both. Absolutely both. But I, I'd say cut probably more than anything. But if you put the hooks in the wrong area, it's completely defeating the purpose of making a good cut. So it's both. They work hand in hand with each other. And, and that's experimenting, okay? Everybody's got their own way of doing it. So this one's ready to go back in my brine as well. So again, I've got half dozen of each of them cut, ready to roll. You need a better picture? <laughs> Little Vanna White pose. There you go. Catch of the day. Thank you very much. You bet. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna take one of my leader rolls. And actually, I'm, I'm not gonna use one of these. I don't know if those are the correct length. I'd rather use one of mine that I know is the correct length. So trim that off real quick. And I'm gonna pass this one around so you guys can see it. So I got my double hook set up. I'm gonna grab my blue herring because it's a little cleaner to pass around. This form of rigging a herring is called Westport style. That's just what they named it. I'm gonna cut that little tag end off because that'll create a bigger hole. It's called Westport style. In my opinion, it's the fastest, easiest method. Creates a great spin. Bottom hook first. Always, we're working with the bottom hook first, okay, on a double hook setup. I'm gonna go in the short side of the herring, okay? This is the short side. Does everyone understand what I'm saying by the short side? Okay, you got the long side and you got the short side. Go in the short side, come right out the middle of the herring. Okay, smack dab in the middle of the herring. And the lateral line? Right about at the lateral line, yeah. And I'm gonna work this through carefully. I do not wanna create a big hole, okay? Pull this out, I'm done with that hook. Don't touch that hook again. I'm gonna take my top hook now, going in right next to the backbone, out the short side again, almost straight up, okay? That's my, that, that herring, it's that fast. That's why I have them cut ahead of time. Boom, five seconds, I got a herring rigged and it's ready to go in the water. You'll get to the point where you're so confident. I don't, I just throw it in the water and let it out. I don't need to check it because I know I've done this a million times. I know it will spin, okay? The first few times you might want to give it a look and make sure it's spinning correctly. I'm going to pass this around so you can see what I'm talking about short side versus long side. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and do one more. Let me cut this leader off this rod and I'll pass it around the other side so you can see it done again. This particular leader had three hooks on it. I'm gonna cut off that third hook. Let me grab my chartreuse one. I'll make you guys a mess, how about that? Okay, again, got my double hook set up, going in the short side, coming out, kind of rotated as I do it so I'm not creating a big hole. Top hook, right next to the backbone, almost straight out the top of the herring, done. Okay? What I like is this, this bottom hook to be trailing out about three quarters of an inch. There is no place on that herring that that fish bites that it will not get hook. Whether it bites it from the head, it's gonna get hook. Whether it tail nips it, it's gonna get hook. I want this hook hanging out a little bit further. If you're trolling around and you notice that you're getting bit and you're not hooking fish, 
I'm not afraid to make this even longer. Sometimes fish are timid. They want to come up and just barely grab it and let go. If I've got this dangling further back, this thing's rotating like a top, okay, like you see it there. This, with the resistance of the water, is hanging right back behind it. If it bites it, you're going to hook it, okay, and let them eat it. Okay, let them, let that rod keep going, going, going. And again, just like quick fish, let them eat it, okay? Don't rip it away from them. I'd rather you wait too long than not long enough, okay? So I gotta figure out how I can get this passed around without making a mess. Is that the purpose of third hook that you Yeah, and the only time I ever do that is in the fall, and I do that fall Chinook fishing. I don't do that Springer fishing very often. Oh, great, good idea. It, you're you're kind of counteracting this, the way that it wants to rotate because it wants to rotate towards the short side. So if you put it in the long side, it's fighting itself. It spins a lot better if you do it in the short side. I'll flip it over so you can see how it's in the short side. But it would slow the roll up dramatically. It might, and keep in mind we're trolling as slow as possible, so I want every advantage of that thing spinning. Because if that herring's going through the water and it's not spinning, it's not fishing. The advantage of a cut plug herring is to be rotating like a top. Question. Yeah. Which one are you using in the river? This one only has one, but if I were to, if, if I had a bait cutting guide that had two of them on there, I would use the coho or the, or the silver cut every time because it's a faster spin. I like a faster spin whether I'm chinook fishing or coho fishing. I want, I don't want a big wide flop. I want this. I want a top. And that's what that coho cut gets you, okay? So I, I want that thing spinning on an axis. I don't want the tail flopping way out around. I want it nice, tight. I can put a herring in the water and say, wow, that thing's going to get bit pretty quick. And I can put a herring in the water and say, eh. So you want a nice, tight roll. And that's, that's absolutely ideal. Is that just for the river or just for the everywhere. I like that everywhere. I, I want a nice, tight roll. I have done better with tighter rolls than I have big, loose ones. Question. It depends on the current. So it's doing you no good to look at a speedometer. It's doing you more good to look at a GPS because the GPS tells you speed over land, okay? Because if I'm just going off that little paddle wheel in the back of my boat, I'm remember I'm trolling down river with it. It's not gonna give me an accurate speed. So I go off GPS. I don't wanna be going any faster than three and a half, okay? Three and a half sounds extremely fast. Out in the sound, it would be cooking, okay? But keep in mind, I'm trolling with the current, so it's pushing me as well. I am barely in gear, and I want to be doing 2.5, 2.7, 2.8. If I get much over 3, it starts cutting down the bite a little bit, okay, and then i got to go to more lead and more line out. Um, I'm trolling with the current. I, I like that 2.5, that 2.5 to 2.7, 2.8, and that's GPS reading. Okay, question. Okay, but if you're not trolling, what's the speed of the water? just depends on the current. It depends on what part of the tide you're in. And where you are in the river. If it's a choke down portion of the river, it's going to be moving faster than if it's way spread out. Yes, it is. That's why we're doing everything we can to get a herring that rotates at a slow troll. I can just tell you that I am barely in gear, okay, and I'm looking at my GPS and I'm typically I'm doing 2.5 to 3 0. Barely in gear, and I want to make sure my stuff's spinning. Go as slow as possible with keeping your stuff rotating. That's the easiest way to do it. As slow as I can, making sure that my herring and flasher is still spinning. If it's not spinning, you're not fishing, so you might have to speed it up a little bit, but as slow as you can go to keep that stuff rotating. Have you ever tried using your electric You could really run it slow. Yeah, I haven't. I, the only reason that's on there is because I'm going steelhead fishing tomorrow and I didn't want to take it off just for the seminar because I use it for steelhead fishing in the river. Um, I don't, um, just because it, it would probably juice my, I got 24 volt system, but it only lasts so long. But I just, those little Yamaha kicker motors will go pretty darn slow, and it's, it's going as slow as it, the only time it speeds up much is when I see a bite happening, and I see a rod start bending a little bit, I'm not afraid to go and give it a little gas to set the hook a little extra. As slow as you can go to keep it spinning. That's the easiest way to look at it. Yes? Have you ever tried uh, the Brad's? You know, the cut plus? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, the guys on the east side really like them. I know Eastern Washington, they, they pack them with tuna, canned tuna, tuna canned in oil, not in water. Um, I've tried them. I haven't given them a good shot for springers. I gave them wholehearted effort fall fishing when there's a lot of fish around. Yeah. 
And boy, I'd much rather have a cut plug herring out there. Yeah, not to say that they don't work because I caught fish on them, but if I caught one on those, I caught five on herring. Something about biting onto a nice piece of bait than it is biting onto a piece of hard plastic. There, I saw some more hands here a minute ago. How do you judge the speed you're going to go then? Because you got your bike recurring, you're trying to still cover. Yep, that's when you got to refer back to slow. See what that does? Just that little bit of open in that, that thing, that's what it does. Um, the easiest way, instead of talking speeds, is just to say, go as slow as you possibly can with your kicker motor, maintaining course, okay? Don't go so slow that you can't steer. Go fast enough just to make that thing rotate, period. Even if you're going backwards? Don't go backwards. Turn around and go the other way. You always want to be going with the flow. You want to be covering ground. You don't want to be going backwards. We're not back trolling here. We are trolling. Watch, it's a monkey see, monkey do sport, big time. If you're the only guy trolling one direction, you're, you're probably the only guy trolling one direction for a reason. <laughs> if, if the tide is coming in and it's pushing you up river, don't be afraid to turn around and troll up river. If the tide's pushing you down river, always troll with the current, just slowly. Is that, okay. Yes. Do you zigzag much? I don't, I like zigzagging, absolutely. Because what you're doing is you're covering different contours and there's an old, rule of thought that are, the old salties talk about the inside rod and it, it makes sense and, it, and I see it happen pretty consistently. We're talking making churns and it always seems like that inside rod when you make a turn gets bit and the reason it does a lot of times is that when you're turning it's slowing down. When you're straightening back up it's speeding back up so that herring is going steady steady slow and then boom right back up again. A little bit of change. It, sometimes it's those little things that triggers a bite. So absolutely. I'm not going to make quarter mile churns out of my direction because again I'm focusing in that 16 to 25 feet of water so if I go way out I'm out in no man's land at 50 feet of water. So on my course at the end of the day I'll look at my GPS track and it shows me a pink line of everywhere I've been that day and all it is is this right here and I'm, I'm trolling up on 16 feet going back down to 25 and I am on my guys relentlessly make sure it's on the bottom. Find bottom. Pick up your rod, drop it and make sure it's, you feel a thud. Okay. I hate looking over and I say find bottom and they're clicking the spool over. I know that they're way out of the zone. I want them to pick up the rod. There, yep, I'm right there. Perfect. Okay. And I don't mind trolling that thing tapping every once in a while. It just means I, I am in the zone. I don't want it dredging through the, through the ground, but I don't mind it tapping periodically. My dad goes down to Bait Boys with me in Astoria and he's probably so sick of hearing me for two weeks straight saying, find bottom, make sure that thing's on the deck. Even the fall fish, I want that thing on the bottom. The difference there is we're fishing a little bit deeper water, the current's ripping through there on the tide, and sometimes we're using up to 16 ounces of lead, big cannonball sinkers. So all day, they'll reach over and boom, there's bottom, okay, perfect. But again, I don't want that zzzz, boom. oh, I found it, well, great, you've been trolling how long out of the zone. So you wanna make sure it's pretty darn close at all times. Yes? Did you say brine uh, and color? If I'm fishing tomorrow, I'm doing my bait right now, this afternoon. Yep, 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 right now. Um, you know, if you did it at 6 or 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock at night, so be it. I like doing it the night ahead of time or the afternoon ahead of time. I want it. This stuff right now would not fish all that great. It would work, but it would not fish all that great. It hasn't had enough time to really saturate the herring and get it firm. And what's nice about, it's that old ice cream rule of thought. I've got a cooler full of ice, I've got extremely cold water, and I've got rock salt. It kind of makes that effect where it keeps things, I can make this stuff, it almost feels like negative temperature. I stick my hand in and it hurts, it's so darn cold because I have ice and I have rock salt, you know, working together, making that super cold water. Okay guys, that wraps it up for part three. Move to part four, for more great information by Josh Hughes of Team Three Rivers Marine. Three Rivers Marine is Western Washington's destination for anglers. Three Rivers Marine is run by fishermen for fishermen. Visit their website at threeriversmarine.com.